Yesterday, we commemorated the 20th anniversary of that terrible day when planes struck the ten, Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and there was a thwarted attempt on our Capitol. And 20 years ago, one of our pastors, Pastor Carol Sims, was moved by God to fly from Montana to Washington to New York City to be there as a volunteer chaplain, as she said, to hand out candy and drinks and prayers and to offer the people affirmation, pray with them. And she said that everyone that she met just thanked her so much and said how desperately they needed her words of encouragement. And she said that it really touched her so much that she wrote a poem about it and has sent it around to be read to everyone. And this was a time in our nation 20 years ago when we all were one. Remember it? When we prayed together, we sang the Star Spangled Banner together, America the Beautiful, when we forgot our differences and just joined together. And we needed one another. None of us could do it alone. We needed each other to lean on, to cry on each other's shoulder, to pray with one another and seek encouragement from one another. And this is a time that we remember how important encouragement is. And as we turn to our scripture, we see the incident of Mary, Mary of Nazareth, and how desperate she was for encouragement. She had just gone through a traumatic experience can you imagine seeing an extraterrestrial being, some people call it an angel, but somebody visiting you and telling you that you're going to be the mother of God. Can you imagine how upsetting that would be? And she was so confused and she had experienced it alone. So she couldn't say to someone else, did that really happen? Am I really seeing things? Am I really, is this happening to me? And she was so upset. And then the extraterrestrial aliens told her that she could check it out by going and visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who in her old age was pregnant. Imagine someone in their 50s and 60s being pregnant. Well, Mary couldn't imagine it. And so we read, Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Mary was willing to walk 80 miles. That's roughly a little more than the distance from Charlottesville to Richmond, a three-day hike, in order to see if what she experienced has really come true, to know for sure that she wasn't just dreaming or, or just confused. And so she knocked on Elizabeth's door and she yelled out, hello, hello. And then we read, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, you're so blessed among women and the babe in your womb is also blessed. Now Mary was only four or five days pregnant at the most and not even our 21st century um, technology could detect that kind of pregnancy. But Elizabeth knew that she was pregnant, and Mary knew that Elizabeth was pregnant. Both of them had been told that by God. Both of them had been sent to encourage each other by the Lord. And Elizabeth is the first person uh, to uh, call Jesus Lord. She's the very first Christian, and she has says the very first beatitude. And when she says, and why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visit me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. She is saying that John the Baptist, who is in Elizabeth's womb is excited about this, that he who was sent to prepare the way of the Lord 
was already doing his work in utero. Can you imagine that? Already preparing the way for Jesus. And this was so exciting for her that she just yelled it out. The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. And this is so much what Mary needed. She had come to Elizabeth filled with doubts and confusion. Have you ever felt doubt and confusion about what God is saying to you? Have you ever experienced that, that you just didn't know what to do? It's because God is constantly calling us to grow, to take risks, to do things we've never done before, and it scares us. I don't know if I can do that, God. I'm not up for that. You must have called the wrong person. And that's what Joe Crocker felt in 1968, after he had recorded John Lennon and Paul McCartney's record-breaking um, hit, A Little Help From My Friends. His producer, Danny Cordell, told him, you have to contact Paul McCartney and ask him if, what he thinks about your song. And Joe said, are you kidding? I don't want to call Paul McCartney. What if he tells me that I've wrecked it, that I've ruined it? I can't do that. And Denny said, you have to. This is what you need to do. Go and do it. I'll be there by your side. Go and contact Paul McCartney. Write him a note. Send him your record. Ask him what he thinks about it. And, you know, I'll stand by you. You can depend upon me. So Joe Crocker went and contacted Paul McCartney. And then Paul McCartney wrote back to him these words. It was just mind-blowing, totally turning the song into a soul anthem. And I am forever grateful for you for doing that. Can you imagine how Joe Crocker felt when the author of the song that he had sung, wrote to him those words that he was forever grateful to him for singing his song. That meant more to Joe Crocker than all the hits that that song made, all the top of the chart um, markings that it made. And he was so encouraged that he went on to keep singing until he died in 2014 because he had received that words of encouragement from Paul McCartney. Mary also was filled with doubts. She didn't know whether she was dreaming. Why would God choose a teenager? She was only 13 years old. Can you imagine when you're 13 years old having this vision from an angel? And she lived in a very poor country. In fact, the average death rate was at 40 years old and the country couldn't even govern itself. It was governed by Rome, by the emperor who lived 1,500 miles away and had not even deigned to visit it, their country. And she couldn't believe that God would do this for her, would do this for her cousin Elizabeth, who was well beyond the age of childbearing, that God would bless them both with pregnancies. And so she needed desperately to hear Elizabeth's voice, to hear her proclaiming, blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. So Mary had her faith shored up. Elizabeth didn't say, shame on you for having to check out God. Shame on you for having to come this way to believe God. No, she affirmed Mary. She blessed Mary and built upon the faith that she had. She gave Mary the strength to accept being a single mother in that day which was, would make her an outcast. Being a single mother in that society which didn't value women and thought of them as loose and immoral if they got pregnant before they were married. And Mary was able to do that because Elizabeth blessed her and showed her that this was truly God who was giving her this assignment. All of us have felt that way at times, that we don't know what we're doing. 
We don't know if this risk we should be taking, even in small things. Just a couple of weeks ago, Joe Pettit was up here playing the piano, and she had chosen a jazzier version of what a friend we have in Jesus. And it was something she had never played before. And she was at the piano just kind of shaking, worried if she could do it. And while she was starting the, the hymn, someone from our congregation in a red shirt walked up to her and he said to her, I don't know if this is appropriate. And then he put $10 on the piano. And she turned around and he was gone. And then she came to me last week and said, I didn't know what to say, but I wish I had said, I don't know if it's appropriate, but it's certainly appreciated. Thank you for your bold and sweet act of affirmation. Jo needed that, and she played that beautifully after that. <coughs> we all need words of affirmation. Even I do. I've been a pastor for 43 years, and there are times when I doubt how good a pastor I am, especially in these COVID times when I've been unable to visit and be unable to be with people in the hospital, be with you when you're through going through crisis. And so I got a card in the mail from one of our folks, and he says, Liz Emery is such an excellent pastor. Sweet blessings from heaven. I never met somebody that good. Well, I'm not sure I'm that good of a pastor, and I know for sure that I'm not that good of a person. But I hold on to this card because whenever doubt about my calling and feelings of my unworthiness come to me, I can pull it out and know that there's someone in this world who thinks that I'm a great pastor and I'm a good person. And this is such a sign of encouragement for me. We all need an encouraging voice. Every single one of us, no matter how confident we may seem on the outside, we all struggle with negative thoughts, with lack of confidence, with insecurity, unsure of what God wants us to do next. And we need each other. We desperately need each other to shore each other up, to encourage one another. Robert contacted Pastor Greg last week and told him how much he appreciated Reverend Greg asking Robert to lead the closing prayer in the Bible study. Robert felt affirmed by Pastor Greg and that was such a blessing. And this is what we are called to do, to bless one another with words of praise even when we don't know each other that well, we can say, you look great. That was a great prayer. My, those are pretty shoes. Wow, you're looking handsome today. Just a word of encouragement, which is like water in a parched desert. We need it. And this is one of the reasons why we're taking our offering for Afghanistan. Not that the money that we will raise is so much or that our hygiene supplies will overwhelm them, but because we want to encourage them. And others have been sent to encourage the Afghan refugees. A woman named Lauren George, who is a flight attendant, volunteered to go for 27 hours nonstop flying people in and out of Afghanistan in the pilots went, out the refugees went. And she said how important that was for them mm -hmm. to have her there. She served one woman a hot meal, and it was the first hot meal this woman had had in a week. Oh, wow. And as she thanked Lauren, Lauren started to tear up. And she said, even if I go through difficult times, I will always remember the difficult times that you are going through so well. I really admire you. And the woman looked up and smiled at her. And others have been sent to help. A, a former Afghan a refugee who left Afghanistan when he was only nine years old was a United Airlines pilot named Zach Kogiani. 
And Kogiani wrote to the CEO of United, Scott Kirby, and asked him if he could volunteer to help the Afghans flee Kabul. And Scott Kirby assigned Zach to be an interpreter. So Zach flew for three solid days, night and day, constantly going to Kabul, picking up passengers and bringing them to DC. And he said he would just talk with them and tell them about his own journey and how he understood what they were going through. When Zach left Afghanistan, he left his extended family, his grandparents, all his aunt and uncles, and his cousins behind, and he has not seen them since. And he told them that they could do it. They could handle this. They were strong enough. If God had given him the power to do it, God would give them the power to make a new life. Mm -hmm. And he said that that was one of the most meaningful experiences of his life, that God had allowed him to help his brothers and sisters who were refugees. God has sent all of us as missionaries of hope to our families, to our friends, to our neighbors, even to strangers. If we see someone on the street that looks down, is looking confused, looking like they need a hand, reach out to them, say a kind word to them, offer to help them. God has called you. God does not call the qualified, but qualifies the called. I want you to hear it again. God does not call the qualified, those who know they can do it, but allows those who doubt they can do it, gives us all the power to be encouragers, to be missionaries of hope to one another. We are here in this world, not for ourselves, but for each other. Life isn't about us, what I can do for me, how I can prosper, how I can grow, but it's about our community, what we can do for one another, how we can help one another, how we can support one another. We are like a well in the midst of a desert, and everyone needs a little help from their friends, and even a little help from strangers. We all need to be like Elizabeth, seeing someone in need and calling out blessed. God is with you. God will see you through this. We need to be like Pastor Carol, ready to hand out candy and drinks and prayers and comfort to one another. We need to be like Joe Crocker, daring to write someone, to ask them for their support and then to thank them for it. We need to be like that man in the red shirt who went and blessed Joe Pettit. We need to be like the writer of this card who sent it to me. We need to be like Lauren and Zach who volunteered their time to go and help those people who were struggling just to survive. We all need to be God's encouragers God has placed in your heart the strength to do it, the power to do it. No matter how many doubts you have, no matter how down and defeated you may feel, you can encourage others. You have the strength. The Holy Spirit is with you. It says there that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly. We are all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be a Christian, to have the Holy Spirit in us, bubbling out, trying to reach out to everyone. The Holy Spirit wants to be contagious, wants to touch all of us with hope, with faith, with trust in God. Let us all stand, and let us stand now, please, and promise to God that we will try to be encouragers. Oh Lord God, help us to be encouragers. 
Help us not to be so concerned with our own lives that we do not see the needs of others around us. Oh God, empower us with the words, the smile, the outstretched hand to help one another. Oh Lord God, may we be wells of hope flowing out into the parched lands around us. May we lift up one another and call one another blessed. Even in the worst of times, may we bless them. Even when we are filled with doubt and despair, may we be able to access the wellspring of the Holy Spirit within us and help another person and thereby lift our own spirits up because it is in doing for others that we are freed from the depression and despair that the enemy wants to cast us into. It is in helping up another person that we are lifted up. Oh Lord God, empower us all to be missionaries of encouragement and of hope. Amen, amen, amen. And now I bless you and call upon God to send you forth into this world to bless one another, to be the voice of God to one another, the affirmation that each of us needs, the kindness that each of us hungers for. Go forth sharing God's love with everyone because you are blessed, you are called, and you are qualified. Amen, amen, amen. Anyone who would like to be anointed as a missionary of hope can go out the back door and receive the oil of anointment.